Hey everyone, today we're going to be assessing who the deadliest killer in Dead by Daylight is. We'll be trying to work out each of the killer's kill counts, based on both their lore, their tome lore, and other things like cosmetic flavor text. This time round, I also have all your input from last video's comments. Some of these are shockingly high. It's nice to know it's fiction. Let's get into it. First off, let's start with the killers who actually haven't killed anyone prior to their time in the realm. The most well-known one is the Spirit. From what we know from the lore, Spirit has not killed anyone. She has fought multiple of her bullies in her tome lore, but she definitely didn't kill them. So yeah, there's nothing to indicate the Spirit killed anyone prior to her time in the realm. Zero. Much like Spirit, the artist seems to be in a similar situation. Early into the lore, she is blamed for the death of her younger brother, Matthias. However, this is just her father's drunken interpretation, and it's by no means her fault. He had accidentally fallen into a creek and drowned. Other than this, at the very end of her lore when she is kidnapped, her kidnapper is attacked by crows. These crows she sees as saving her, until they begin to also attack her friends, killing them too. Again, she blames herself for this, however this is by no means her fault, even indirectly, and was more than likely the entity's intervention, causing these crows to act aggressively. Meaning, Kamina has killed no one. Zero. The Executioner as a creation of James Sunderland's mind technically has killed no one. He kills different things within Silent Hill, but equally these aren't exactly real. One person he does kill is Maria multiple times. I don't think any of this counts still, as it's a fabrication of Silent Hill and James. So Pyramid Head has probably killed hundreds of things, but the number of these that are real is zero, at least from what we know. The Plague's only direct kill is that of her mentor, her barn, within her tome. She does also assist with sacrifices, however it's debatable whether these really count. First, because we don't know if she was the one who actually would perform them, and also because the setting of her ancient times, it's debatable whether these even count. Often people would offer themselves up to be sacrificed, others not of course, so it kinda depends how you interpret it. Either way, it's pretty horrible. I think the only clear one we can count as definitely being Adiris' decision was her killing of her barn. So, one. The demo we have in game has potentially only one confirmed kill, as this is the quick spoiler warning for Stranger Things Season 3, demo Gorgon from the Russian prison we see Hopper kept in. We can only confirm this demo has killed a singular person in the Season 3 end credit scene. This number is likely higher, almost definitely higher in fact, based on the blood drenched cell it's in, but from what we've seen on screen, we can only confirm one. The Legion are quite a simple case. In their lore, they collectively kill a store clerk in their home hometown of Ormond at a place where Joey used to work. Afterwards they go to Mount Ormond and bury the guy before they are taken by the entity. As this is their first kill and they get taken directly after, then they collectively share this one, and presumably only one. However, there is possible reference to Susie potentially killing someone else in a New Year's cosmetic. It recounts Susie stabbing someone for their jacket in an alley, leaving them for dead. It's pretty possible this guy survived though, still possibly two for the Legion. The Cenobite is taken by the entity after the original 1987 film. From what we see in this film, I don't believe Pinhead directly kills anybody, especially with some characters returning back to life essentially. I checked out the wiki for more clarity on this. Two definite ones we can count from the original film are Frank and Julia Cotton, making two. This means from what we see, it's just two. However, apparently in the whole series, he kills closer to 35. Again though, they aren't technically canon to Dead by Daylight, so I think we're sticking with just the two. The pigs count can be counted across the films of Saw 1 to 3, as Amanda is taken after the events of 3, at the point she would have died. She first kills a guy to get the reverse bear trap key, further Adam Stanhite after the first game we see in Saw, then Allison who is placed in a trap, finally she sets up a game for a guy called Troy, who also dies. This makes a total of 4. The Wraith first kills back when he's just a child and lives in Nigeria, after finding the men who killed someone close to him. He burns them. There's a total of 4. Later when he moves to the US, he kills his boss after discovering that he's been getting him to crush people in cars, unknowingly to Philip. Philip lashes out and kills his boss before being taken by the entity. There was much debate in the comments of the original count video, and it seemed the opinion on whether Wraith's crusher kills counted was they don't because they weren't intentional and he was unaware this was even happening, and was traumatized upon finding out this was the case. So we're going to go with just the guys he killed in Nigeria and his boss Azarov, making a total of five. The shape we have in 
game is Michael Myers from the 1978 film Halloween. In this film, we see him kill five people. First his sister when he's six, then later when he escapes from prison, he kills a total of four more people, making a total of five, as he's taken shortly after the events of the film. For Dead by Daylight, none of the Halloween sequels are technically canon. The hag's only mentioned kills are on her captors in Backwater Swamp. She doesn't kill anyone during her tome lore. We never get a specific number for the captors, as they're always referred to as inhabitants or captors. No numbers, but definitely multiple, who all appear to live in a shack. I think it's likely to be around five, based on this. The ghost face has another very unclear number. In Roseville, we can figure out that he killed six people though, based on the address book add-on, which is said to have listed all of the Roseville victims' addresses. The only ones we can confirm, therefore, are these six. As we know he killed in other towns too though, this is possibly up to somewhere like 18, assuming he's been to around three. The clown first kills a guy when he's a kid, keeping his finger in a cigar box. From here on, it's unclear the number he kills, but based on the fingers around his waist, we can add another four. Then a further two from his add-ons. In his tome lore, he then kills a moustached man, making a total of eight. For the nemesis, we're going to be looking at the Resident Evil 3 remake. Despite hunting stars, he never successfully kills any stars members. He kills Brad in the original, but in the remake, he gets killed by zombies. In-game, we see him kill the helicopter pilot on the parking lot rooftop, five civilians on the subway train that he destroys, as well as the captain on the subway train, and finally Tyrell within the lab. This makes a total of eight. For the Death Slinger, many of the people he interacted with he captured to put in Hellshire Penitentiary, so most of them he didn't actually kill. Some he does though. The first one is from testing his prototype spear gun, then a prison guard, putting his count at two. Henry Bayshaw and the prison warden he does contribute to, but doesn't directly kill. Further, looking at the law for Dead Dog Saloon, we can learn of the events that happened there, with the Hellshire gang clashing with the Mason Kelly gang. Throughout the Dead Dog map, we can find a total of five gang members, depending on the tiles you get. I think as Deathslinger is implicated in all of these, we can put his count at nine. The Trickster's first technical kills, I would argue, are when he leaves his no-spin bandmates to die in the Mighty One studio fire. It mentions in the lore that he didn't like splitting the fame five ways, meaning there were four bandmates who died in this fire. From here, he starts killing more people, the first being a college student. Then he kills three more people, and finally in his base lore, he kills all of the Mighty One board members, aside Yun Jin. We can therefore add another seven. This brings us to 15. Looking further at his tome lore, we can find that he indirectly kills a guy called Lucas after kidnapping him and setting him up to be shot. We're going with 16. The Cannibal is from the 1974 film The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In this film, Bubba kills a total of four people. You will point it out though that this is probably higher, what with all the skeletons seen within the Sawyer residence in the original film. The four could easily be over 10, possibly into the hundreds. I personally think that this number is closer to around 10. The way the film frames the events is that the whole group arriving to the house was something that doesn't usually happen, due to how panicked Bubba gets. I think it's anywhere from 10 to 20. The Nightmares is another very unclear number, as aside the direct kills we see in the 2010 film, we know of other people he has killed when Quentin and Nancy are searching for similar occurrences. Directly though, we see Freddy kill four, although this number is probably closer to 20 with the additional articles. We'll stick with 20. The Hillbillies before a somewhat generalized, saying it could be anywhere from about 30 to 100, so let's be a little more specific. First off, we have Max and Devlin Thompson, his parents, making two. In our 9082, we see the Observer viewing a memory of Billy killing a farmer who trespasses onto Coldwind. 3. Later when he kills the police deputies, the names Jim, Ray, and Don are mentioned, making 6. Then another 5 unnamed deputies and the chief, making 12, all within the tome law. There could be more deputies, however, and the time he spent on the farm being taken by the entity suggests there could have been more people like that farmer in the Arcus entry. My guess, though, is going to be a lot lower than before, at 12 to 25. The twins last time I believe I overestimated a bit. The first mentioned kills are two cult members who get burned by Victor knocking over a candelabra. After Victor's death, it then mentions that people died to Charlotte's hand after her botched robberies and desperate attempts to escape. I think somewhere around 25 is a better estimate from her years of running and fighting when she needed to. The nurses are fairly straightforward, but still fairly unclear. The first chronological kill is in her tome lore when she injects a patient with a deadly substance. In her base lore, she then kills a bunch more in Crotus Pren Asylum, patients and staff. It's stated, as the morning staff arrived one day in September, they found over 50 dead patients, lifeless, in their 
bed along four staff members, also dead. So one from the tome law, four staff members, and over 50 patients in the base law, I think a fair estimate is 60. The trapper is stated to have led over 100 men into the tunnels of the Macmillan estate mines, before seeding them off with an explosion, leaving them to die. As it mentions over 100, but not plural of hundreds, we can assume it's above 100, but below 200. Further, we can add another one for Evan's father, Archie, who was found in the Macmillan warehouse. Further, the people his father ordered him to kill throughout the years, as his enforcer. I think we can go with about 150. The doctor has a very unclear number. His first kill seemingly happened during his CIA recruitment, which seems to be around 5. At Larry C. then goes on to kill an unspecified number. After the massacre there, the law mentions that all personnel and prisoners' bodies were accounted for, including Dr. Stamper, but no sign of Herman. As Larry's has a fairly average size, we can place the total number for Doctor at around 200, including any of those he killed throughout his years of work there. The Huntress has an absolutely terrifyingly high number, and one that is very unclear. Throughout her lore we learn that she's attacked villages. One thing it mentions though that I got wrong before was that she just raids the villages. It doesn't exactly say she killed everyone in the village, just a few families so she could kidnap girls. Despite this, the many villages and families she's raided has probably resulted in around 100 people being killed by her hand. She then killed anyone who entered her territory over the years, for which we can probably add another 100. Finally, when war breaks out, Anna kills whole groups of soldiers. For this, I think another 100 can be added. I'm saying 300. This may seem high, but the way Huntress is framed is as a legend within the area, quoted as a half-beast lurking in Red Forest, the Huntress. So 300 seems weirdly about right. The Blight's number is extremely unclear, but we can presume his serum kills into the hundreds. From the part of the law that states, he was bound and loaded into a wagon. When his blindfold was removed, a sickly man showed him a mass grave filled with hundreds of bodies. Unbeknownst to Talbot, his productivity increasing drug had killed nearly an entire factory's worth of workers. This makes me think this number is from around 250 to 500. It's also possible his serum was shared to other factories to raise productivity, ending in those people also dying. So this number could be even higher. It's unclear, really. Finally, the Oni is a truly terrifying character whose kill count is absurdly high. It's equally unclear, though. It's stated that Kazan killed imposters in the hills and the valleys, on the beaches and in the woodland. Much like Huntress, he becomes almost a legend within the land, earning the name Oni Yamaoka from a lord. Anyone who calls him this, he also kills, mentioned to be in the hundreds. He then fights a true samurai who he kills, finding it's his father. This makes him even angrier, and he goes to kill the lord. He kills a dozen and more samurai, the lord, and then multiple dozens more farmers before he is overrun, and left for dead, before finally being taken by the entity. I think Oni's count is therefore around 500 to 1000, which again is kinda terrifying. Alright well, that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed, and be sure to drop your own thoughts on this down below. Thanks, and goodbye.